1 John 4 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Our previous videos have been about surrendering your senses to the Holy Spirit to better receive revelation. And they have touched on the idea of verifying the trustworthiness of what you may receive. But now we need to dive in head first. We must take a detailed look at how you learn to decide, sometimes instantaneously, what to do with the various forms of revelation you receive. Remember, it is by practice that you learn to discern good and evil, and such discernment is of critical importance in the days in which we live. Dear brethren, don't be naive. Not all revelation comes from God. And not even all of what appears to be spiritual comes from the Holy Spirit. As the theme scripture for this chapter makes clear, it is imperative to learn how to test the spirits in order to determine if they are serving God or the enemy. Do not be naive. The unseen spiritual reality around us is populated with both angels and demons and human beings are notoriously poor at telling the difference between good spirits and bad ones. Only naive people will believe everything that comes across their screen. Satan is always lurking just out of sight, plotting wickedness against God's people, and we must not be ignorant of his schemes. 1 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He especially loves to deceive the very people who are trying to learn how to receive revelation from God. Let's stay ahead of that. Realize that you can't elude the enemy just by pretending he is not there. He is. You will find him around every corner. During your lifetime, you will be exposed to plenty of evil, and you might even need to learn about some of it. But you do not have to fall for it. To stay clear, you need to discover how to discern the difference between the devil's doings, God's workings, and everything in between. I have run across some people who hold back from testing the spirits, saying, Well, I don't want to offend the Holy Spirit. I guess they think it would bother God if they acted suspicious about something that may or may not originate from him. That kind of reasoning does not hold water. Just look at scripture. False prophets are real, and God wants you to spurn them. He wants you to be alert and to test the spirits. He wants to help you do this, and your mistakes do not worry him. He is pleased when you make the right distinctions and lean into him for guidance and wisdom. Other people may read the above scripture about testing the spirits and get a little nervous about dealing with evil powers, but forgetting that Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have not received a spirit of intimidation or bondage, but a spirit of courage, effectiveness, and love. Trust the Holy Spirit to take care of you when you confront evil. Put your trust in the God who can protect you and who will deliver whoever calls on his name. It is not that every mistaken word comes straight from the devil's mouth. Some of it is more like junk mail, not of much value, 
but not especially harmful either. Again, you need discernment to determine whether a word is from God, from Satan, or a mixture from a human mind. Remember, you do not need to discern and test the Spirit solo. You always have the Holy Spirit helping you. Relax and let Him show you what to do. The basics of discernment is to be a God-centered person. Be a God chaser more than you are a demon buster. Even if you have a deliverance ministry, you should not be demon-centered, but rather God-centered. As a God-centered person, worship your heart out. Not only should it be your natural response to His greatness, but you can expect to be cleansed and filled anew with His Spirit when you worship. When you worship His Majesty, His Majesty will visit you. Praise Him. Pour out your heart to Him. Bow to Him. Dance before Him. Enjoy His presence. Then it will be a much simpler matter to both recognize Him and discern something that is foreign to Him. Another basic discernment key has to do with the authority figures in your life. Christians who blindly follow their leaders in the name of proper submission are prone to deception. Ask yourself, have I given away to others the power of making my own decisions? If you have, you have already removed yourself from taking direction from God himself, and you are likely to find yourself in trouble at some point. Trustworthy leaders point you to God, not to themselves. Responsible authority figures never need to make you feel that they are indispensable to your well-being. Now, it is true that scripture tells us to submit to those in authority over us. Romans 13, 1 through 2. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves we can get a better idea of what proper submission to authority looks like if we note the way trustworthy people in the Bible modeled it. Daniel, for example, submitted to everything that was expected of him as an exile in the court of the king of Babylon, unless it transgressed God's clear command. This is the reason why Daniel did not bow down to a false god, even under the threat of losing his life, but he would submit to almost everything else demanded of him. And when he objected to a royal command, he did so with respect. Jesus knew that the Roman taxation system was unjust but he still paid his taxes, as seen in Matthew 17, 24 through 27. Additionally, Peter and John showed respect to the authorities and obeyed them, except when doing so would put them in disobedience to God, as we see in their response to the Sanhedrin. Acts 4, 18, 20. Then they called them in again, and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Daniel, Jesus, Peter, and John honored those who were in human authority over them, but they honored God first and foremost. 
You can always honor, but you do not always have to obey. For instance, if you had submitted yourself voluntarily to an authority figure, such as a pastor, you are free to leave if you wish, being decisive but respectful. If you find it difficult to honor a particularly unworthy authority figure, I recommend praying for that person. Paul wrote, 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2. I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority. We know that most of the political and religious leaders in Paul's time were dishonorable men. And yet, Paul recommended honoring them by praying for them. Such prayers have the added benefit of changing our hearts too. God bless you for watching. Amen.